Anybody remember what what's happening in here? It's drying out. It is drying out. It's nice. Actually. It's wonderful. Um, remember what this is? This is called. We cut through the diaphragm. Yeah, peritoneal. This is the, this is the skirt steak, yeah, as it's called. Steak. Typically, uh, that would be a little bit more recognized as a market cut in a, in a beef cow. Uh, not not much food here when it's a pig. Um, and we've got our leaf lard on here. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the skirt steak and the leaf lard. And I think Andy and I are probably just going to cruise through the first uh, pig, uh, demonstrating what we're doing and how we're doing it. And then we're going to take off and head to Boston for a bite to eat, and you guys got it from there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back, what, three or four? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I got you blocked in. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played. So uh, one thing you'll hopefully see us doing as we go through this, um, you won't see us doing a lot of real finicky knife work. There's a couple cuts on here that do justify finicky knife work. Um, but invariably, every single workshop, people are just intimidated or they're afraid they're going to do something wrong or cut something wrong. So they like to use the last like half an inch of their knife and, and cut like this the whole time. Yeah. I'm not making fun. That's okay. Like if, if this is an intimidating thing, I understand it. You're not going to screw anything up here. The worst thing is going to be cutting yourself. The second worst thing is going to be cutting into a bone and bone and blade. There is a thing about cutting this. someone else. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but you're not going to screw anything up. All right, we're going to show you how to do all the cuts of this pig in usable ways for your family's use, uh, familiar cuts from like a retail perspective, um, in a way that will be comprehensive uh, and accessible. But even if you were to botch the cut that you were going for, it just goes in the trim bucket and it's going to make great sausage. Like every time. Nothing is going to get screwed up here and thrown to the, to the dogs, as it were. Um, so don't, don't be scared. Don't be intimidated. You know, cutting the skirt steak off, you know, every single time we have this going on, like, this is already a dead animal. You're not going to hurt it, right? So just, just go at it. Feel like, feel like the knife is an extension of your hand um, and cut with some amount of confidence. Um, the skirt steak can be removed from the front or the back, um, depending on how you're feeling, but it's not a wrong or right answer. And it sits right on top of the ribs. <coughs> and it's removed thusly. There's fat on it, that's great. If you love fat and you want to trim your fat, great. We, we tell people with a, with a well-raised heritage breed pig like this, that has a, an ample amount of um, back fat, specifically, um, but the um, intramuscular fat that a, that a pastured pig will have, I can even see some, some marbling in the loin. Um, you're probably not going to have to have a dedicated fat pile for your sausage. So if you were like a sausage file and you loved your sausage, and you loved your salamis or whatever, and that was your thing, um, then your recipes would call for, for specific ratios of, of fat to meat. You know, you want to have 30, 70, or whatever, and that way you've got your pile of real lean cuts and your pile of fat cuts. And then when you pass it to your grinder, you have perfect control over the, the ratio of fat that's in there. But with a heritage breed pig, you're already going to have sufficient fat throughout every cut, and you're not really going to have to worry about it. So you can kind of decide whether or not you want to separate your fat from your meat for your sausage trim. But anything like this, like that's a little red um, from blood, of course, but that's perfectly suitable to go into a sausage pile. Absolutely. That's kind of a no-brainer. So um, the kidney removed? You, uh, you know what? Is it hidden? This one thing didn't have a kidney. <laughs> Super funny. You think it's in there? Oh, we'll find out in a minute. I well, I have a bowl is. over here. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. So this guy right here, though, so, uh, so all I can say about fat. This guy right here doesn't go into your sausage pile, right? This or your or your fat rendering pile. It goes into it's a dedicated uh, fat rendering. We'll render this fat separate than the rest. This is the leaf lard, um, mm -hmm. and it is really a wonderful fat for trimming. Um, for rendering and baking with specifically, it has a real neutral flavor. It creates unbelievably flaky crusts. Um, it's a 
just a really, really great, highly coveted pastry uh, bar. This, it'll sit on here, you can pull it away. Typically, uh, it works just as well to push on the meat instead of pull on the fat. Uh, every once in a while, you'll have to cut, you know, that's fine. But for the most part, you can pull it right off. Do you guys render? Is this, yes. is this the yeah. large rendering group? Oh, Great. Stuff. Mm -hmm. Great. I buy large to render. <coughs> is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Depending on how well this is set up, and this is set up nicely, it'll come off pretty well without much cutting. Mm. Does it come off kind of that easily like that because it, it hung last night? Uh, that has cool a lot to do with it. Yeah. Yep. That has a lot to do with it. And the more it's set up, for sure, the, the leaf will always come off easier than, than um, any other fat on the animal. Hey, how about that? It is in there. <laughs> Look at that. So, you have a hidden kidney. Kind of fun. It's a treasure hunt. Yeah. Kind of fun. So, I, we also encourage um, the use of a rag throughout today. Uh, as you There's do things like this, if you do things like this, your hands will get greasy and slippery and you can grab a sharp knife. So, it just makes good sense. Make sure your hands are dry and clean. So the kidney is buried in the leaf. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and uh, just like they are in our mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never been there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always funny too. We we talk about when we talk about pigs, we talk about our bodies. But like you know, you've heard of kidney shots, like. It's right there on the back of your spine. Like that's where that kidney is. If that pig were standing up, same place. We heard about your kidneys. So there's leaf bark with a kidney inside it. Yeah, and the, the kidney is nestled in, uh, in the leaf all the time on both sides, but it pops out pretty easily. Well, you really learned something. I thought that everything we took out when we oh, eviscerated, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. People would be like, what is this kidney doing in here? <laughs> that should have been in with a liver. <laughs> but that would be dishonest. What are some uses for kidney? Uh, you, can, you can mix it uh, with your sausage meat, mm -hmm. right? Because you've got 50 pounds of potential sausage meat here and a pound of kidney, and you would never know how you could <laughs> use of it. Uh, Andy and I have done poached kidneys before, deviled kidneys before, kidney. which were wonderful. Um, it was a, um, like a kidney pie, like a kidney pie cooked in its own uh, gravy. It was breaded. Uh, it was really, really, really yummy. Um, and I'm not an uh, organ guy, and mm -hmm. I, I loved it. So that was wonderful. Uh, this is the leaf lard. It's, it's going to be great. It's going to be separated. We'll keep that. Uh, and the leaf. Well, actually, we'll probably put all four halves of the leaf uh, together, and then. Tried all of that so. Okay, so what's next? Any guesses? Kind of a trick question. You have to be a. Would you put the leaf there? Oh, I think so. Okay. Yeah. So the deer hunters in the room can speak to this one. What's What's next? The coveted. Close. Close, yeah. Well, it depends on where you are. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's probably true. The tenderloin, right, which is not to be confused with the loin, though people just confuse it all the time. It drives Andy and I bonkers. Um, this is the loin right here. The loin is what goes along your back, your spine, keep you upright. Uh, the tenderloin, however, is inside the animal. It's not outside the skeleton. It's inside. Um, that's why it's so tender, because it never does any work. Um, Coincidentally, that's why the loin is also tender because this is a quadruped. Right? If it were standing upright all the time like we are, the loin would probably be very, very tough. But the quadruped, the tough muscles are here and here. They're the ones that are keeping it upright and working all the time. Um, the loin, on the other hand, just kind of hangs out. It doesn't do a lot of work on a pig. Um, and as such, it's, it's relatively tender. The tender loin uh, sits inside 
the spine. And you'll notice I'm working from the tail to the head. The reason I'm doing that, I mentioned this a little bit yesterday, is because the muscle fibers of the tenderloin uh, lay on one another like this. And if I work this way, I would just open them wide up, wide open, and I would just fillet the tenderloin into pieces. I would be shredding it. So I work from the tail to the head, and I keep my fingers together <coughs> real tight for the same reason. I don't, it is very, very tender. It is a very tender muscle. And if I'm not careful, and if I just start ripping at it, I will tear it apart. I don't want to do that. Now, there's a little bit of stringies in here. You'll find stringies throughout. These are nerves that connect the tenderloin and other muscle groups to the spine. If they're tough and I can't get them with my fingers, I just nick the nerve, just barely, and then I go on. We've had the pleasure of doing a number of butcher workshops with different doctors of varying backgrounds, specialties. So we've, and vets, uh, so we've been able to pick up all kinds of really interesting, like I've only called them tough stringies before. So <laughs> an ophthalmologist was like, actually those are nerves, you know, an ophthalmologist of all things. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they still go to med school, study anatomy. Even a nurse practitioner mm -hmm. has to learn those things. Yep, that's right. Or an L LPN or an RN mm -hmm. has to do anatomy. Got one of those over here. This is two, technically, two muscle groups. I believe it's the not Ursa, uh, Saurus, Saurus Major and Saurus <laughs> Minor. We almost went straight to the big little dipper there, didn't we? But they they lay on one another, but they don't often like to stay together. And then what happens um, is once you free up the bulk of this tenderloin, which I've been able to do, it'll end up terminating way back in the ham. Uh, and that's okay, like at some point, you have to cut it. There's a um, foot, as it's called, of the tenderloin, and it sits way back here. You're not going to be able to get it out. Uh, so at some point, you're just going to have to make the cut uh, and terminate wherever your tenderloin, as far back as you can, usually. Something like yay. And then you end up with your tenderloin. Now, a lot of people uh, would trim that up. Um, this is the tenderloin. Yeah. Yeah. It's not huge, uh, but this is what you would see in your grocery store, yeah. very commonly uh, in a small little bag with a marinade around it, because mm -hmm. the tenderloin, uh, while they, being very, very tender, lacks flavor because it doesn't have any fat, and the fat is the carrier of all flavor on this pig. Um, it doesn't work, so it doesn't have a lot of myoglobin, um, and, and its tenderness is nice, but it's generally flavored so that people can enjoy it more. All that to say, it's got fat on it now. Most people would trim that fat off. Andy and I are not big proponents of that. We're like, well, why would you do that? Why would you do that? I mean, if you want it to be really clean and neat and presentable, we'll trim that up and make it look nicer. But like the idea of cleaning all the fat off and denuding it is kind of a counterproductive to me. It's kind of the whole point of having yeah, yeah, right, right. The fat's healthy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>